So chapter approved is out and I'm very happy to report I was wrong. There'll be nothing for Necrons. Necrons did get something. In actual fact, we got quite a lot of points reductions, but is it going to make a difference? Well, today we're going to find out. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video made for adults not children and if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with all things Necrons then please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Okay so chapter approved is out and in this video we're going to talk about all of the Necron changes. Now I'm not going to cover the new missions in this video, I'm just going to have a look at the points reductions and the match to play rules that's going to affect Necrons. Now of course Necrons have had points reductions but then again so have other armies so you have to take that into account. So let's run through the changes and see how they've affected our Necron army. Okay, so let's start with the Codex. We'll move on to Forge World later. And first of all in the Codex, the HQs. Now there's been some considerable drops on the HQ front with four of our HQs getting points reductions for the first time. Only two characters have not got any points reductions. So let's have a look at them. So let's start with our HQs that are named characters. And first of all is Anrakur the Traveller. Now he's come down 27 points. Illuminor Zerus down 10 points. Imatek the Stormlord down 20 points. Nemsor Zandrek down 25 points. Orokin the Diviner down 15 points. And Vargard Obran down 10 points. Okay, so there you go. So with the exception of Traz and the Infinite, we've got some decent points reductions there on our named characters. Now our named characters previously have been a little bit overpointed. So these reductions, I think, bring us in line with other armies a little bit more. However, they don't make them super cheap, but they're definitely more usable. Now for me, Imatek the Stormlord is probably the best reductions here. Imatek now 140 points. Originally he was 200 points, so this is the second reduction on him. And for 140 points, just getting the extra CP and double my will be done for Sotek units. And I generally play Sotek armies. So I think Imatek is a bit of a standout winner. However, Illuminor and Orican also came down in points, two of my other favourite HQs. And let's not forget a big points reduction on Nemesaur. Our special characters are now definitely more usable and we don't have to pay through the nose for their points. Now in terms of our normal HQs, the Catacomb Command Barge has come down 19 points. The Destroyer Lord down 15 points and the Lord, 10 points. The Overlord has come down, 14 points. Okay, so some good points reductions there. Just the Cryptech not going down in points. However, at least it didn't go up in points. The Overlord's reduction in points is very useful, very welcome. It's a fantastic HQ choice. And if you're not going to choose a named character, it's probably still going to be one of the main choices along with the cryptic. However, the Lord has come down in points and I think that makes the Lord very playable indeed. It's actually quite a nice, cheap HQ now. Now the Command's Barge and Destroyer Lord also came down in points, which is great to see. So unless you're going to be taking just Cryptex or maybe Traz and the Infinite, then we're going to save points on our HQ selections within our army lists. Now is that going to make a difference? Well, let's have a look at some of the other units. Now in the Troops section of the Codex, Immortals and Warriors, there was no points change. So no change for our troops, which to be fair on Immortals is probably okay. I can live with that. So they're actually pretty good for their points. However, it's very disappointing not to see warriors get a points change. 
Now Warriors really could do with some rules changes more than points changes. However, if they were cheaper, we might see them on the table more. Now I do have a list which I've built around Warriors and Ghost Arcs, which I'm looking forward to playing. I was hoping to see some reductions on Warriors just so I can get more toys in that list. However, that list is just for fun. I think Immortals are still the go-to troops choice for Necrons. Now the Elite's slots were a little bit different, with Death Marks coming down 3 points and Flayed Ones coming down 4 points. The Catan Shard of the Nightbringer down 25 points and the Deceiver 45 points. Lich Guard came down 2 points. The base points for a Triarch Stalker stayed the same, however there were some point reductions on their weapons and Praetorians' base points stayed the same. However, there's some big changes to their war gear. Okay, so some decent reductions there for Elites. So let's have a look at Death Marks first, coming down to 14 points from 17 points. Three points a model. Now that means we can take a unit of 10 for 140 points. Definitely not such a commitment as 170 points as they previously were. Now personally, I don't generally use death marks. I haven't had that much success with them. These points reductions could make a small unit of five more playable now because they're just very cheap. And also it could make a unit of 10 worth a go because if you get them in the right place at the right time, they can cause some damage and they also can be a bit of a mind challenge for your opponent knowing that they can come down in your enemy's turn when they deep strike. So for the points that they are, they might be worth having another look at. However, I'm still not convinced they're the best choice from the Elite's option. So let's have a look at the other point changes. So Lich Guard came down a couple of points. Now if you already use Lich Guard, this is most welcome. Personally, it's not a unit that I use. It doesn't sort of fit my play style. However, any reduction is always useful. Okay, so the Catan, the Nightbringer and the Deceiver, both down in points. Now I don't think this is game changing, but I think it's most welcome. If you are using the Deceiver for the redeployment, building a list around that particular function, then yeah, having a cheaper Deceiver is very useful. The Nightbringer, now at 155 points, is quite an interesting take. He can do some reasonable damage if you can get him into close combat, so it's worth having a look at him. Like I said, I don't think it's game changing, but he's definitely playable. Now the Triarch Stalker didn't come down in its base points, however the Heat Ray and the Twin Heavy Gauze Cannon both came down 10 points. And those are the guns which generally we use. The Particle Shredder did come down by 5 points though, if that is the gun that you use. So it's 10 points less. Now the Triarch Stalker was already an auto-include unit, unless you were playing the Nihilic Dynasty. Allowing you to re-roll those ones is very useful. So yeah, the Triarch Stalker just got better. Okay, so Praetorians, a problem unit for Games Workshop, and this is down to the fact mainly because it doesn't have a dynasty code. Now, another big points reduction on Praetorians. I think if my calculations are correct, we've gone from 26 points to 20 points a model for the Rod of Covenant. And then with the sword and pistol, we've gone from 26 points to 22 points a model. A huge points reduction. However, if you're taking a unit of 10 of these, you're still looking at investing a good couple of hundred points. Now, Necron points are very valuable. So are Praetorians now usable? Well, everything's usable, of course. But in my opinion, without that dynasty code, I personally wouldn't take them. Now, I would love to know what you think. Do you think that Praetorians are now usable at this new points level? Let me know in the comments box below. Personally, I won't be using them, but I really would love to hear what you think. Will you be using them? Right, next up in the Elite slot, and for me, it's the biggest winner, and that's Flayed Ones. Now I'm a bit biased when it comes to flayed ones because I own 60 of them and I have a themed 
flayed one army. Now with the points reductions to 13 points I feel like I can get that army back on the table especially when we look at some of the other units that have been reduced as well. So for me flayed ones is a big big winner. In actual fact I think even if you don't have 60 flayed ones for 130 points for 10 flayed ones that's a very good little distraction unit for our armies. Something to play with your opponent's deployment, to have 10 played ones coming in, being able to potentially assault with all of the attacks, especially if you're in the Novok dynasty with those flayed ones. So yeah, for me, in the elite slot, the flayed ones are the biggest winners. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think flayed ones are overpowered. I think they're just at the right points now compared to what they were. So they're definitely more playable. Now one of the key supporting units in my flayed one army is the wraiths. So let's have a look at those wraiths and the fast attack choices. Now the fast attack slot didn't get many changes, however there was one big one and that was the Wraiths and they came down 6 points. So not much change there for our fast attack, Scarabs staying the same, Destroyers and Tomb Blades staying the same, which to be fair I think we were expecting some points increases on those two units, so staying the same is fantastic. Now of course the single heavy destroyer that you can take with the destroyers has changed in points, we'll talk more about those in heavy support. But the key thing here is Wraiths. Wraiths coming down in points. So Wraiths, six points cheaper than they were. Now with the other reductions to Whip Coils and Particle Casters, we could actually take Wraiths at the same points we were paying with the Caster and Whip Coils. However, for me, I think having cheaper Wraiths is the key thing. So now, for example, in my Flayed One army, Wraiths, six of them for 252 points. That is very good and very welcome. Now whilst Wraiths aren't amazing in close combat, at this moment in time with Primaris Space Marines being all the rage because they've got very good rules, well Wraiths are actually very good at taking out Primaris Marines, Marines with two wounds. And I think you're going to see a lot more Wraiths on the table, they're going to be very useful. As for dedicated transports, the Ghost Ark came down 25 points. So Ghost Arcs came down 25 points to 120 points. That is actually pretty good. However, unless you're taking Warriors, then there's no point in really taking Ghost Arcs. I'll be saving 50 points in my Warrior list. But from a competitive point of view, I really don't think you'll see Warriors or Ghost Arcs on the table whatsoever. Right, heavy support and starting up is the Annihilation Barge which came down 10 points. We had a 20 point reduction for Canoptic Spiders and the Monolith. The Transcendent Catan came down 20 points and Heavy Destroyers coming down a whopping 13 points. Okay, so first is the Annihilation Barge down in 10 points. Now I'm using two Annihilation Barges in one of my lists. They're not an amazing unit, but they can kick out a reasonable amount of damage. They give you a couple of units that can go out and get objectives, and they can also keep your enemy busy trying to take them down with their quantum shielding. So 10 points reduction, very useful. Now the Canoptic Spider came down 20 points, making it 50 points with a Gloom Prism. Actually that's not bad, however it still has the same problem that it had before, that it can easily be targeted and destroyed in a round of shooting. The Canoptic Spider needs a rules change rather than a points reduction. I have my fingers crossed that in Psychic Awakening we'll get something for the Spider, but we'll have to wait and see. No points change on the Doomsday Arc, which is fantastic because it didn't go up in points, which a lot of us was expecting. However, Heavy Destroyers have come down in points. That makes a unit of three 111 points. Now that's actually pretty cheap. Heavy Destroyers still have the same issue in that they've only got one shot each and they go down very quickly because you've only got three models. However, they're quite cheap now. 
The question is, will you take them or will you stick to your three doomsday arcs? I'm going to try Heavy Destroyers and see how I get on because it is quite a small investment of points, 111 points for three. And potentially, even though they will be shot out very quickly, well, if they're shooting at your Heavy Destroyers, which are now pretty cheap, they're not shooting at your other stuff. So that could be an advantage for us. What do you think of Heavy Destroyers? Again, let me know in the comments box below. Will you be using them now? Elephant or monolith? Okay, so the elephant in the room, the monolith, coming down another 20 points to 300, starting its life out at 381 points. It's now 300. Now, for me, that's still way too expensive. For the rules that it has, I think, personally, the monolith should be between 200 and 250 points. If the monolith was 250 points, I would take two of them in a list. However, at 300 points, to be fair, I'm not going to touch it. The monolith needs to be cheaper or have better rules. A 2 plus save, quantum shielding, something that makes that 300 point investment worthwhile. It's such a shame because the monolith is such an iconic Necron unit. I mean, who doesn't like to see monoliths on the table? They're so cool. Fun games, well that's fine, but anything where you're trying to win the game, and monoliths isn't going to be the choice. Finally for heavy support is the Transcendent Catan, coming down 20 points. That's a nice little reduction, and if you like to use your Catan, then the Transcendent Catan with his fractured personalities is actually quite a good choice. Like I said, it depends if you like using Catans or not. I haven't used many Catans apart from in a themed list. In my normal lists, they don't tend to make it. But uh, yeah, a nice points reduction nevertheless. Now in terms of Necron Flyers, the Doom Scythe stayed at the same point. However, the Night Scythe got a 20 point reduction. Right, our Flyers, good to see no points increase on the Doom Scythe. That was a little bit surprising. I thought they might go up because you see so many lists with three Doom Scythes in them. I suppose they are a little bit glass hammer because if you don't get first turn and a Doom Scythe goes down, then you've lost the ability to use the stratagem. So no points changed there. However, the Knight Scythe has come down 20 points to 115 points. Now you do have the issue that if you don't go first, the Knight Scythe can go down very quickly. However, it could be quite a nice delivery system for some of your units. So maybe the Night Scythe, possibly you might see on the table a little bit more. But yeah, Doom Scythe is where it's at. So how about our Lords of War? Well, the Tesseract Vault stayed the same. However, the Obelisk came down 30 points. Okay, so the Vault stayed the same. I was expecting the Tesseract Vault to come down just slightly in points. It had quite a big points increase after everyone was using three Vaults on the competitive scene. So it went up quite a bit and now we don't see many Vaults. I was expecting a slight reduction just to maybe try to get them on the table a little bit more. However, they have stayed the same. Now the Obelisk is the one which has come down in points. 30 points cheaper, but it's still 350 points. And for the damage output that it has, I just don't think it's worthwhile. Yes, you've got the Toughness 8, but you get no invulnerable save like you do on the Tesseract Vault. So, yeah, 350 points. You won't see this on the table. Okay, so on to Necron Weapons. The Heat Ray coming down, 10 points. Particle Casters down, 2 points. The Particle Shredder down 5 points. The Rod of Convalent down 6 points. And the Twin Linked Heavy Gauze Cannon down 10 points. So those are the changes to ranged and melee weapons. And of course I've already discussed those changes, how they affect the units previously. However, what about the War Gear options? Whip Coils down 5 points and a massive 17 points for the Resurrection Orb. Okay, so the big one that stands out there, of course, is 
the Resurrection Orb, coming all the way down from 35 points to 18 points. Games Workshop, I hope it's because you've been watching my Necron HQ videos where I constantly say that the Resurrection Orb is just overcosted. However, now for 18 points, that is very viable and I'm going to put them in pretty much every list that I can where those characters are going to be around reanimation protocol units. 18 points, definitely usable. Right, that's the codex, but how about Forge World? First of all, the Tomb Sentinel, which is down by 15 points. The Tomb Stalker came down by 20 points. The Canoptic Akanthrites came down 12 points. Okay, so Akanthrites down 12 points each to 42 points. Now that's the same price as Wraiths now for a unit of six. And I'm quite pleased with this because I've recently acquired three more Akanthrites to give me a unit of six. I'm going to be trying these on the table. I think they're going to be quite good now. The Tomb Sentinel and the Tomb Stalker coming down in points. A nice little reduction. I don't own these models, I've never really played them, but I think they're definitely quite usable. So there you go, some nice point changes for Necrons once again. I'm very happy to see those point changes. Now how much is that going to affect our armies? Well, I've had a look at my army lists. To be fair, most of the units which I use in my lists haven't really changed that much. Obviously, Wraiths have come down, and I use those quite a lot. Our characters, points reductions, is going to free up a few points. In my Surgecron list with the Tesseract Vault, I've got myself an extra 80 points to spend. And the version with the Seraptic in there, I've got another 36 points. Not a huge amount, but enough to buy a few more toys. Now, of course, this, as I said right at the beginning, has a reflection on other armies. So if other armies are also getting these points reductions, then the playing field is still equal. The cheaper HQs will allow us to play our favorite HQs a little bit more now. And also having cheap HQs means we can unlock the stratagems a little bit more as well, gets our CP count up. Now ultimately, points reductions are not going to solve some of the inherent Necron problems that we have. That can only be done by rules changes. It's going to be interesting to see what changes Games Workshop make when we get a new codex. For now though, I'm going to share this playlist here where I have some key strategies to help you win with Necrons. So definitely check that out. And if you're not subscribed yet, start now and hit the Idik Beer icon. Beam me up.